Hey guys, Luke here. Uh, what order should you do things whilst detailing your car? It's a question I've seen come up often enough on the forums and the groups, and there is these uh, handy little flow charts that people bandy about, but I thought YouTube doesn't have an answer that I filmed personally, so I decided to put one together. Um, now, before I go through this, uh, I want you guys to know that um, we're all individuals, we're all unique, and we'll all have our own approach to this uh, with subtle changes, subtle nuances uh, in the process. Even in fact, whilst writing this list, I put it to Team TBD, uh, and they tweaked and critiqued my list as well and made a few alterations, a few changes in some key areas. So before I begin, just know that, um, but this will give you a good outline and I'll tell you why the steps are where they are. Uh, so let's go. First things first is preparation. This is going to be my daily bit of alliteration, which is prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Um, that's a lot of peas. Um, get your stuff ready. Uh, and by that, what I mean is have your buckets ran. You should have, you know, in the majority of cases for, for a lot of us, three buckets of water prepared, your grit guards in there, your pressure washer set up, your products and chemicals laid out. Um, if you're anything like me, and I imagine a lot of you are, you have choice of chemicals uh, for these different jobs. So just lay out what you're going to use in this process first. Have it all ready, have it to hand. Same goes for all the tools, the brushes, uh, the bits and bobs that you will need. Um, a little bit of preparation will just go uh, to a much nicer flow in this process. So the first part for me on this flow chart is wheels. I always start on the wheels, um, I don't know why, and I have no strong reason to say that's the right place to start, but I do just the same. Uh, so with wheels, my flow is this. Number one, rinse them. Uh, you can have a lot of loose surface crud on there, so give them a good rinsing. That's wheels, tires, and the arches, because I class those all under this one job of the wheels. Uh, so give them all a good rinse. After that, apply your chosen wheel cleaner. If the wheels have been pre-sealed, obviously that's going to make life a lot easier. And to uh, you know, some extreme extent with ceramic coatings, a wheel cleaner becomes a negated item. Uh, but assuming, like for a lot of us, you've not done that. Uh, so get your chosen wheel cleaner, apply it to the wheel, it's the face and the barrel, uh, and allow it to dwell. Whilst it's doing that, I tend to attack the tires. So apply some all-purpose cleaner, scrub the tire faces with an applicable brush. Uh, and at the same time, I'll also give a liberal spraying to the wheel arches. Uh, and I will give those, uh, after they've had some dwell time, some attention. But I tend to spray the all-purpose cleaner at this point. And then move on to your wheels. I always do the wheel barrels first. So I'll start off with a wheel woolly set and I'll work the back of the wheel working back to front, uh, finish up with cleaning the faces after agitation, rinse everything well, uh, including the wheel arches that have just had some dwell time with the all-purpose cleaner. Um, consider this their pre-wash, uh, and then if necessary, you may want to bust out a tar and glue remover uh, and an iron fallout remover as well. So choose to do those as and when required, uh, but that is wheels. Once all four wheels are done, tend to double back then with the, uh, the water that's still in the bucket, uh, a spray of all-purpose cleaner back in the arches and scrub with a wheel arch brush. Uh, rinse everything down and call the wheels for now done. And then we move on to the car. So I always start by rinsing. Uh, rinse away all of the loose dirt and uh, grime that you possibly can. Uh, there is a debate whether or not rinsing makes pre-washes less effective, but I firmly believe in doing it. I think it's a step that is worthwhile. Uh, so rinse the car thoroughly and then apply your chosen pre-wash. This might be a citrus pre-wash, it might be a snow foam, depending on what your uh, preferences and sensibilities are. So apply that uh, and allow it time to dwell. Whilst dwelling, uh, tackle, if you can, the tight work. That is to say, get some all-purpose cleaner and uh, a brush or brushes uh, and work around the nooks and crannies. So we're talking things like seals, uh, around badges, grills, things like that. Um, I have to say in this particular step, if time allows, as certain pre-washes, certain snow foams, and certain environmental factors, we're talking those bloody hot summer days, um, they will play havoc with things drying. So if time does not allow, then do the tight work after you've rinsed the pre-wash. Uh, but if you can do them both in one go, 
that is what I prefer to do. So after you've rinsed, that's uh, all your pre-wash and whatnot uh, rinsed away from the car, we move on to the uh, wash stage. So that should be a two bucket method. Again, for a lot of us, some of you guys will need to use waterless washes, depending on where in the world you are. Uh, but two bucket method, I will explain in a different video. However, there is a lot of information out there covering it in a lot of detail already. Um, but wash your car. The process for me is always to start high, work low. Um, so start at the uh, roof, and I always will go roof down onto the front and rear glass, and then bonnet and boot gets done in one, uh, sort of the first bit, but not from one dip of the mitt naturally. Um, rinse the mitt often. Uh, after that, tend to do the glass uh, and then work down the car. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to then save a secondary mitt for the lower portion, so your sills uh, and the like, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, whatever is a uh, preferred method for you is great. Um, but yeah, work top to bottom. Again, keeping an eye on anything drying on the car in the summer months. Uh, so if you need to rinse often, rinse often. Uh, in these colder months, you largely can get away with washing the whole car before going to a rinse. Uh, but either way you do it, rinse your car after at this point. After that rinse, uh, decontamination is the order of the day. So that is tar, iron remover and clay. Uh, now, again, a uh, question is raised, which is the correct order to do these? Um, the two chemical ones are the right ones to do first. So the fact you can remove decontamination from your paint without contacting it is the way forward. Um, any contact, as Jim White at White Details always says, is bad contact. Uh, so use your iron and your tar remover. For me, tar and then iron is the way to do it. Um, and there is argument for either or, and uh, in all fairness, I do understand that. Um, for me, I've never seen a bit of iron on the paintwork large enough to hide a bit of tar underneath it, but I've seen tar on the big enough to hide iron underneath it. So the idea for me is if you remove the tar first, you're going to expose what is left. You can then use your iron remover, get that chemical decontamination done, rinse between both stages. So tar, rinse, iron, rinse, clay, rinse should be... Uh, the order of the day on this one. And then assuming this is a full detail, so this is with uh, polishing as well. So now that the car has been through all of these stages, uh, the next stage I think is very important is to inspect the paintwork. Uh, so that is in two ways. So one is with a light source, check the condition with swirls, blemishes, uh, marring, anything like that. The second one is with a depth gauge, a paint depth gauge to really find out what paint you've got available. Uh, so the next step for me is inspect. Then it's on to the polishing set. So if you're hand polishing, you'll have your hand polish of choice. Polish, uh, and that would be absolutely fine. If you're using a machine polisher, and depending on the severity or uh, the actual goal in hand, always start with the least aggressive polish combination you have. Work up in aggression until you hit a combination that works for the paint that you're on, uh, and then polish the car accordingly. That may be a single stage, a two-stage or even more polishing set, uh, but get it all polished. Frequent alcohol wipes between these polishing sets just to inspect the situation with the paint. Uh, so using something like Car Pro Eraser as an example. Uh, and once you're all polished and you're happy with it, you move on to the next step. Do not, and I've seen this um, far too frequent, I don't understand it, do not be tempted after polish to glaze the paintwork. Um, a lot of people are, 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 well I say a lot, there are people on the forums at this point that are stating that and they're giving that to other people as fact, as a statement that needs to be done. A glaze by its very definition is designed to hide imperfections in the car, uh, in the paintwork. If you have polished and you've done that correctly, there shouldn't be anything to hide. So again, it negates the need for a glaze. Some people will do it just for the sake of uh, they might prefer the finish, but for me, I don't believe in that as being a pertinent step or a correct step in this flow. So we're all polished. At this stage, some people will dust, uh, some people will use an airline and blow whatever debris is on the paint away. Uh, if those things aren't an option, some people like to rinse even snow foaming and some people even wash. But at this point, if it is required uh, and there is dust there from the polishing set, uh, deal with it. Uh, likewise, any tape, as you should have taped up uh, before polishing, should be removed. 
uh, and then on to the next step from there. So supposing you have uh, rinsed the dust from the car, uh, dry the car. Be careful, use the correct technique, pat the car dry if it is a patting towel or drag if dragging is the nature of the towel you're using. Do not induce any new marring at this stage. Obviously it is counterproductive to what you've just done. Uh, and then we move on to the next step from there. So now we get on to the absolute fun part, the part that a lot of us derive so much pleasure from, which is the final finishing stages, that's dressing and so on. Uh, so for me, I tend to uh, dress the plastics and the rubbers first, so that's including the tires. Be careful not to have any spray go down the car at this point. Again, it's uh, not gonna work in our favor. Um, dress the plastics and the rubbers after that, uh, I will always do the glass. Now, glass before waxing was something uh, Team TBD and I discussed, um, and a few of the guys on the team said that they tend to do it glass before waxing. I've always done it the other way around, but in the spirit of continuous improvement, I'm gonna make this change to my regime as well, with a lot of glass cleaners uh, actually disagreeing with waxes, and some even saying on the description and on the labels, I think it's a good change for me to make. So do your glass work and then moving, move on to protection. So for protection, I'm gonna say wax it. Now you may use a sealant, you may want to use a ceramic, that's all your choice. Uh, but at this point, do your protection, sit back, pour yourself a cup of tea and admire your work. That is the flow chart done. I hope you've enjoyed this flow. Am I wrong? Is there anything that I've missed? Uh, is there anything that you guys do in a different order? Like I say, always happy for continuous improvement. So if there's something that I've missed or you guys feel I can do better, let me know below. I wanna set a target for you guys to give this video a thumbs up. Um, I don't know why, I'm just gonna see if it makes any difference to YouTube whatsoever. So whilst you're here, if you wanna click that little thumbs up icon below, try and see if we can get this video to 100 likes uh, and I'm gonna check the analytics and see if that helps in any particular way. Thanks very much for watching. Take care as always. Bye-bye.